So what we're going to be doing is, is just really looking closely at uh, a couple of examples in the life of this incredible man, David. There's so much to look at and there's so much to cover in this man's life. I am actually spoilt for choice. All right. In our studies, we need to be uh, considering the life of David. King David, warrior of the Lord. And so what we're going to be doing really is to be thinking, and we won't have time to cover all these incredible topics, but there's different things of his life we could think about. David, of course, a man after God's own heart. The slaying of Goliath. The anointing. Being king. In later years, his weakness in taking another man's wife and committing murder. David was on the run. Difficult times, challenging times. And the experiences that he had, how did it influence him in years to come? What I want to do is, in our studies of this man, David, warrior of God, I want you to ask yourself the question, what or how is my life being shaped now for the future? So, for instance, David, as a shepherd boy, looking after his father's sheep, the responsibility, the care, the attention. How that brought maturity in his life. And so the question to you and to me. What are my experiences now? Who are my friends now? Because our friends... The things that we experience now will shape our lives and actually prepare our lives for the future if the Lord remains away. So let me give you an example. If you are used to doing the Bible readings at home with mom or dad or even by yourself, when you get older, and maybe have a family, those are the things that you, because you've been influenced at an early age, through reading, through going to the meeting, going to youth days or youth weekends, whether it's virtually or literally, those things that you experience now shape your life for the future. Oh, but you see, there's a flip side to this. Here's, here's the downside. If you, uh, if, you are a, if you are a smoker at an early age, right? <laughs> Chances are you'll take that habit with you right the way through your life. If you have the habit of prayer you will take that habit of prayer right the way through your life through school through college maybe even through university in your family life so please make a note of this choose your habits carefully because they will be with you for an awful long time. And those habits of prayer, of reading, of attending the meeting will help you in your life much more than you realize. 
at this age, believe you me. So, we could talk about David's men. David's warriors. And the thing to remember is that David surrounded himself with many people, many people. So the battle with David and, uh, David and Goliath, maybe the times of difficulty when it was ever such a struggle for David and somebody wanted to kill him, King Saul. Now you see all these experiences shaped his life. I don't know what type of experiences you're having now. You might find it a struggle in and out and in and out of lockdown. Going back to school or college. But what you need to remember is that sometimes these challenges can make us into better people. And this man, David, lived an incredible life. So, the early years. The early years. 1 Samuel chapter 17, please. Now, we've looked at this chapter for a long time in my life and I'm sure in yours. So we're going to read very carefully and we're going to see what lessons we can learn. The early years. The early years set and lay, they lay the foundation as to how you cope with things in the future. God's people at this time were being overrun by the Philistines. The Philistines had now made inroads into the land of Judah. Verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokok, which belongeth to Judah. I want you to keep a marker there. And I want you to ask yourself the question, why does it tell you that Shoka belongs to Judah. Now, keep a marker in 1 Samuel and go back, please, to the book of Judges. Judges chapter 1. When the people now are going into the land, look what Judges chapter 1 tells us. Keep a marker in 1 Samuel chapter 17, now that you've lost it. <laughs> Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? What tribe should go and spearhead the attack into the land? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. So what I want you to remember is the tribe of Judah. Now, you, you, you will know, I have no doubt, this, this is Sunday school stuff. You will know the, 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 the tribes, right? There's, of course, you know what I'm going to say next, don't you? Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Ephraim, and Manasseh. These were the tribes. And out of all that mighty company of people there was one tribe that god chose to be the leader to spearhead the attack into the land now that's rather strange isn't it now after the death of joshua after the death of joshua joshua lived until he was 110 he, he fought the battles for 40 years in the land when they got back in there when they went into the land And 
30 years, I'm sorry. And when he went into the land, the people, it seems, maybe weren't doing as much as they ought to have done. But the point is, Judah was the one who was chosen to go into the land. 30 years, 110 when he died, Joshua. And the point is, Judah was to go into the land, firstly. Now go back to 1 Samuel chapter 17. The Philistines had encamped, gathered together at Shokot, which belongeth to Judah. Well, do you know what Shokot is? Shokot is right in the heartlands of the tribe of Judah. In other words, the Philistines had marched right up to their front door and beyond into the heartlands of the area of the tribe of Judah. What does that tell us? It tells us that the Philistines now had the upper hand. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And we know how Goliath goes out. Notice what it says in verse 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, about nine and a half feet tall. This giant of a man was a huge problem. I've got a question for you. Do you have giants in your in your life? Bad habits? No. Things that you are afraid of, worried about? What are the giants in my life? What are the giants in your life? And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail. His weight, the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. He had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. The staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bear bearing his shield went before him. This man was so, so he, he was huge. There was someone who had a shield that went in front of him he was huge and this man goes out and he cries and curses send out a man to fight me verse 10 that we can fight together so we'll pause that there now enters David, a man after God's own heart. And so his father asks him to go and see how his brethren are and to see how the battle is and to bring a present. Verse 18, take the cheeses, 10 cheeses, and see how your brethren fare. Now look at verse 20. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took, now you see that? Left the sheep with a keeper. He was obedient to his father. Secondly, this young man had responsibility. If you have responsibility at an early age, if mom says to you, uh, make your bed, if dad or mom says, uh, put the bins out, your turn to do the washing up or the drying up, whatever it is. You might find it difficult at times. But all that, it's training you for something. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. It might be that when you're at this age, 13, 14, mom or dad gives you a certain responsibility doing things around the house, going to do the shopping, going to visit an old uncle or old auntie to do the readings. Those are the habits, good habits, that you develop when you're young. So when you're older, it 
sets you in good stead. It makes you into a better person. So here's the point. David, as a young lad, as a young man, had the responsibility of looking after his father's sheep. Huh. You see the point? He becomes king and he ends up looking after his heavenly father's sheep. Here he was. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with his keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. Yes, father. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the, the battle in array, army against army. And there he was. And this giant of a man is actually defeated. So here then is the set out. And you can actually go to this area. You can see Source Camp, where it was once situated many, many centuries ago. The Camp of the Philistines, the Valley of Elah, Shocker, and that was the battle scene that would take place in that area. Amazing. So what we need to keep in mind is that God was in total control. It was God who knew what the outcome would be. God's people needed to learn to trust in him. So it's all about God preparing you for the future. One Samuel, please, I'm going in at chapter 21. David, verse 10 down to verse 15, pretends that he is mad. David left and he went down to Gath and he pretends that he is mad. Well, I'll tell you, do you know, David, he must have been... Well, I look upon as being, him as being an, an incredible artist. Great at producing music for the service of God. But there was also other things about his character. One Samuel chapter 21 and verse 10. And David arose and fled from Saul that day for fear of Saul, verse 11. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? So just think of this situation. David had killed the champion, Goliath of Gath. And perhaps David thinks, well, there's only one place that King Saul will not try and track me down. That's right there in Gath. He arrives in Gath and then he begins to realize maybe this wasn't a good, good uh, choice after all. I've just defeated your champion Goliath of, of Gath and I've walked right into the enemy's back garden, backyard. Maybe that tells us a lot about what was going on in David's, David's mind. Saul had his spies everywhere. And there's only one place that he will not come to find me. That's in the land of the Philistines. In the city where Goliath lived. Goliath of Gath. 
Verse 13, and he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands. He pretended he was mad and scrabbled on the doors of the gates and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. He, he was a superb actor, David was. Incredible. He fooled a lot of them. And the king says, why have you brought this madman to me? I have no need of this man. David fooled them. And so now we come to 1 Samuel chapter 22. David has been anointed king by the prophet Samuel. And then he gets to the stage in his life where things are not really making sense. I would one day be king, but I have to run away. Why did God put David through all that difficulty, those challenges? Well, actually, he's putting them through these challenges and he's preparing him, as I said earlier, he's preparing him for when he becomes king. And the hardships that you might be experiencing now are designed to make you stronger and teach you that you must trust in God more because you have learned, learned to rely on God. So just imagine the scene. David now is in a situation where he is actually run away into a cave. Verse 1. David, therefore, departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. It must have been quite a lonely time in David's life. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented or bitter of soul, my Bible says, gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. So he runs away. And now all of a sudden he's got 400 men. And he's become their leader. So these people that gathered to David. They had come with, let's just say, a lot of baggage. When I say baggage. Those who were in distress. Those who were in debt. Because we know that Saul took lots of things from the people. So this group of people, they, they had lots of problems, lots of challenges, didn't they? And, they? and David became their captain. And they were in the cave. The cave of Adullam. Now think of it for a few moments. David was supposed to be living in the palace. First, he looked after sheep. He protected them from wolves, uh, from uh, um, lions and bears. And now he's in a cave. Must have been very difficult, David. Maybe things didn't make sense. Do you think sometimes in your life things just don't make sense? I can't, I don't know what God really wants me to do. I don't know what, what the plan really is. Oh, here then is the beginning of God choosing people to be the leaders with David. Those who were gathered to David. And he became their captain. 
the captain of 400 men. Later, he would be the captain of 600 men and all their families, their children, their wives. They were a band of outlaws trying to survive, trying to keep one step away, at least from Saul, who was trying to hunt them. It wasn't easy, was it? It wasn't easy at all. And those of you who are older and know who know, who know those of you who know and remember and understand their, their Sunday school lessons, you know what David's sons had turned out like. Not very good, really. But we know what Absalom was like. Adonijah, we know what he was like. Jonadab, we know what he was like. The sons of David, on the whole, were an awful bunch of sons. Well, they were born with a silver spoon in their mouths, weren't they? Remember Absalom? Absalom tried to kill his father. And Adonijah wasn't much better. He wanted to throw him for himself. He wanted to, he wanted to rule. They wanted power. They were born into privilege. Born with silver spoons in their mouths. Born in a lovely palace. Where was David born? In a very humble house, I'm sure. He was the one that looked after the sheep. He was the one who had to fight lions and bears to protect these sheep. The family relied on him. His sons, well, I'm sure they never fought bears or lions to look after sheep. No, they were probably too busy riding around Jerusalem in their chariots, their low-cut chariots, you know, speeding around the place as if they owned the place. Very, very different to their father. They were born into privilege. So, Adullam, some say it means justice, some say it means refuge. That's interesting, isn't it? This place of refuge, where these men were with David in his service, learning, learning and showing them what they should do in walking in God's ways. And so it must have been, it must have been easy for David. It was quite difficult, I'm sure, quite difficult. And so David had to learn, really, to trust in God, the justice of the people, or maybe even refuge. Think of that cave for a few moments. That was a cave where everything was dark. And yet David would learn in that cave loneliness, of anxiety, of stress, not, sure, not knowing really what the future would hold. Do you have a cave mentality? Well, a cave is a lifestyle, a mindset, a phase or an experience we face because of fear, rejection, downcast, abandonment, disappointment. David would have felt like that. Do you know, he wasn't all that far away up the road where he defeated the giant. Now think of this for a contrast. This young man, he is a hero. He kills the giant. He goes from hero, if you pardon the expression, to zero, doesn't he? Everyone, they, they sang, didn't they? Saul has slain his thousands, or oh, but David, his ten thousands. He goes from up there and you remember the promise? Well, the man that defeat, oh, defeats the, uh, the, the, the giant, I'll give him my daughter to wife. He'll be a free man, no taxes. He'll have the key to the city, as it were. 
and then he ends up living in a cave, running for his life. These are the symptoms of hopelessness. Hopelessness, yes, will attract you to a cave of darkness. And the only way you can get out of that cave of darkness is walk towards God. Walk toward the light. He will show you the way. David, of course, was a great king, a great psalmist, a great warrior, yet he was afraid as you or I. And that fear and that doubt drove him, as the slide says, drove him to the cave of Adullam. He was lost for a while in a cave. Oh, but that cave possibly means refuge. It was a place of escape, to get away from it all. It was a time of relief. A temporary location. Now in this time of lockdown, it means different things for all of us, doesn't it? Perhaps not seeing our loved ones. But you know, we know that God will bring us through these times. But here's the thing, what are we learning in the process? Are we reading? Are we praying? So I want us to look closely, please, at these different parts. And very quickly, we're going to see now how David is being hunted all over this particular area. About a quarter of the size of Wales, he ran around. Now we know that Israel is about the same size as Wales, and this is about a quarter of it. Just think of the area travel round about. We're told in section one, David flees. In fact, the, the, the Psalm says, I am like a flea. David says to Jonathan, I am one step away from death. Saul had his spies everywhere. Number one, David flees to Samuel at Ramah. That's important to bear in mind. First place he goes, he goes to Ramah. Come across to 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 1. When you have a problem, who do you go? Who do you talk to? Do you talk to your friends at school who have nothing to do with the meetings? Who will give you advice that, that is not godly advice? Here's a good one for you to please make a note of and do it wherever possible. You got a problem? Talk to your CYC leaders, your Sunday school leaders. Sometimes you might find it difficult to talk to mom and dad about it. Talk to the uncles or the aunties in the meeting. Find them. Ask them what they would do. They will be much older than you. But they were your, they were your age once, you know. And Samuel died. 1 Samuel 25 verse 1, and Samuel died and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house. You see, David and Saul, they were, David and, uh, um, and Samuel, it was like a father and son relationship. Then, number two, David travels to Nob and receives Goliath's sword. And then he goes down to Gath, the Ziklag. He travels to Adullam. He, goes, he takes his family down. Around number four, David finds refuge for his parents at Mizpah. 
So he knows that if Saul can't find him and destroy him, he's going to try and destroy his family. So he takes his parents, his loved ones, as far away as possible. David flees in the wilderness. Saul's trying to track him down, trying to hunt him down. He's fearful. He's worried. He's scared. But he needs to remember that God is in control. Lord, I can't understand. Why are you allowing all this to happen? David, you don't understand now, but you will look back over your life. And the thing that you learned when Saul was trying to hunt you down, when you had life difficult, challenging, that you were learning. I was teaching you, David, to trust in me. That's so important. So, what did David learn? David learned to trust in God. Whether it was the giant who was nine and a half feet tall, whether Saul was hunting him down in the wilderness, was it with it, whether it was in a cave, David had people around him that would help him and encourage him, that he could pray with, that he could talk to them about his worries, about his concerns. So now you are at school, trust in God. You're worried about things, what the future might hold. Just take one day at a time. You're not sure about advice, if you've got problems and questions to ask people. Find people in the meeting who love God's word, the Bible. And remember this again. David was just a humble shepherd fighting bears and lions, protecting his father's sheep. One day, he would become a king to protect God's sheep, the people, and Finally, choose your habits carefully. Make sure they're good habits, reading, prayer, because those habits and even the bad ones may well be with you throughout your life. Choose good habits. And in our next talk, we're going to look a little closer at David when something went wrong in his life and how he coped with it.